party with your host, Dustin Ripka. Hello and welcome to Sex Party. I'm your host, Dustin Ribka, and this episode is all about the power of the pussy. My guest today is Lindsay Darger. She's a certified sex coach. Lindsay is going to do a lot of things in this episode. It's a ton of value. She's going to find the G-spot. She's going to point out how you can find it. She is going to show you how you can squirt. She's going to answer the eternal question, can everyone squirt? Um, There's an answer there. She explains how to have cervical orgasms. She talks about the difference in normal clitoral orgasms and cervical orgasms and the craziness that you can get into when you get in touch with yourself. No pun intended. Uh, we talk about her event, uh, Pussy Paint Night. Listen, it's a, it's an amazing episode. And without further ado, this is my conversation with Lindsay Darger. This week's conversation. conversation. Lindsay Darger, welcome to Sex Party. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you? Um, I'm, um, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so right off the bat, cause I think your, um, what you do in the process of what you do, which we're going to get into is really interesting. Can you sort of talk a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. So I am a certified sex educator and sex coach. I live in Salt Lake city, Utah, and I work primarily right now with women and I, I teach them all about sex, of course. And right now I'm doing like foundational things in my programs around hormones, periods, cycles, anatomy, communication, right? Just some of the basic things that we didn't learn about in our education system. And so, uh, yeah, I just like talking about all things sex. And I put a pretty big emphasis on self-love as well because I think it's a really key ingredient to creating a thriving sex life with yourself and then with your partners. So that's a little, little taste. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Well, and you know, because I think shame like has so much to do with what, like what you do, um, that I think it's important to really, cause you have a unique process Mm -hmm. and, um, like with women. And I think it's really fucking cool when I, cause I heard you doing research for you. I heard you on another interview. I'm like, okay, we got to get into that. So if you, if you could, could you explain when you're working with someone new, like from the rip, what that process is, the whole pro, like what that looks like from the, in the beginning. Cause I do think it's like at first maybe a little shocking, but it's like makes super sense. And like, it's really cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really different person to person, right? It's like, we all have our own stories. And so as different as they may be, the core of, I would say 99% of those stories is shame, shame, and guilt around our sexuality, not feeling like we're worthy of pleasure, we feel dirty, sinful, wrong, and we're not allowing ourselves to feel the pleasure and the capacity of pleasure that's available to us. Like some part of us is holding back, right? So with my clients, it's going to be different woman to woman. And the one thread that connects them all is shame. A lot of that comes back from society or even heavier (laughs) religious upbringing. But what that would look like is we can kind of dissect, get to the core of what that specific story is or the experience that happened or the one thing that kind of trips them up mentally when when they're in a space of sexuality. And we can then work on removing that thought, belief, whatever that may be so that they can start enjoying good sex. I'd say another component is just, again, foundational education really helps to break that shame barrier because when we can understand that our bodies are built for pleasure, quite literally built for pleasure, and we all come from sex, then we can just relax a little bit more and recognize, okay, this is a part of the human experience and I deserve to enjoy this. So we, we do individualized work, belief work, kind of breaking that down. But as we add the layers of education and teach around how you can start to ask for what you want, getting clear on your desires and boundaries, 
you really start to experience these like deep, deep levels of pleasure that have always been available, but we just have cut ourselves off from because of this programming and this dogma and this bullshit really of, (sighs) you know, sex is bad and sex is immoral and wrong. And I'm just here to say like, bullshit like it's not it's actually like our greatest power source of energy and when we can um, disconnect from this shame story like we fully inhabit our bodies and our space and we like walk so powerfully especially as women towards what we want out of life right so it's a really fun process and it's really unique person to person but they all kind of follow the same trail (laughs) yeah and I don't know if it was a class that you did or it was um, something you do with specific um, clients or if it's something you do across the board, but it was like you have them take a picture of their vagina. Okay. So can you talk about that process too? Because that to double back on what you just said, like this one fucking really hammers it. This is the one where I'm like, oh shit, this is really cool. Yeah. Yep. So I do a local event called Pussy Paint Night and I call it pussy paint night intentionally because pussy triggers the fuck out of people, right? They're like, don't say that word. Why are you using that word? And it's like, okay, it's time to reclaim this power and stop shaming it. Stop looking at it like it's ugly or wrong or gross and really appreciate it for this beautiful part of our human body and this experience that it can give us of pleasure. So yes, I do these local events. They're so fun. I have women come and they do, they take a picture of their pussy or their vulva, the external part of the anatomy before they come. And we do a little bit of embodiment work first because it's usually pretty nerve wracking. I live here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, the LDS culture here is just huge. It's the predominant religion and there's just a lot of shame that goes hand in hand with that. So I would say the majority of women who come to these classes have some sort of shame story or, you know, dogma put on them from this religion that sex and their body is bad. And I'm like, nope, let's rewrite this whole story. So they come, we do some like yoga, a little bit of movement so they can get out of their head and stop thinking so much about the fact they're going to pull out this picture of their own, you know, vulva in front of all these other women, right? You don't show anyone, you sit across from each other, like on tables. So you're not actually showing anyone, but it's still like, oh my God, I'm looking at this photo and there's people in the room. So we talk a little bit about it before we dive into the painting portion. And it's always so incredible because I ask them like, what, what was your experience taking this photo? And some women are like, I felt so empowered. Like I felt great. That's pretty rare. The majority of the time, it's like, I just, I felt like it was ugly. I couldn't get a right angle. Like I took it 500 times. I don't even like the one I brought, but I had to have one. So I just went with it, you know, and, and we get to dissect a little bit this, this narrative that's keeping them from the pleasure that they're seeking. And then we dive into painting. So I got paint canvases. They look at their own photo and then they paint as I teach full anatomy top to bottom. And it's, so amazing they walk away being like oh my god I didn't know I didn't know any of that um I have a photo of one that I did do you want me to show you yeah (laughs) yeah for the for the for the people that are watching on YouTube like they they will they will they will love that I think that'll be fun yeah amazing and like we create yeah dope Dope. So if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can jump over to YouTube and check out check out the painting. It was like incredibly um, like it, it, like in my head, I'm like, oh, so it's like a paint, like a, everyone's drinking wine. And like that was like a fucking master. <laughs> like the way the te- like the technique that it was done in. It looks fucking amazing. Like great, great colors. And oh, shit. That, it's fucking thank awesome. you. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. And I think. So, so this is fascinating to me and I want to, there's so I have so many questions, so we're just going to like fire them off at you. First of all, how often do you do this event? So about every six weeks I put the event on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long have you been doing it for? For about a year now. And it's a four hour event. So like you just said, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like girls get together and drink wine 
and, you know, our painting. And yes, that sounds like a lot of fun. And my mission is to really talk about the root of what's happening. So I don't do alcohol and I, we talk about real shit because I'm like, we need to actually have a real conversation about this and it's, and not make it a joke. Like, let's just like paint and like drink wine and like laugh about it. Like, yes, good time. And when we drink alcohol, it's somewhat of a way that we can dissociate from life and problems right and it yeah. just relaxes us makes us feel more comfortable because you know um of how alcohol interacts with our body but what i'm calling women into is like let's actually be present with how uncomfortable this makes you feel so that we right. can completely shift the narrative so you can actually start to change the way you look at your body it's not a joke actually yeah. it's fucking powerful yeah and that's what I mean is like, you know, I suggested like the wine or what, cause that's like the only thing yeah. that I, you know, my dumb, like white male, like, oh, no, uh, a bunch of women to go painting. And cause people do those events where they have mm-hmm. like wine or beer and they paint by numbers and it looks cool. But what you showed me was like so much more like museum quality <laughs> than that. And not like, not like knocking anybody else's paint by number shit, do your thing. But that's why I was saying the the wine. I wasn't saying like, oh, yeah, you guys are getting blasted and painting, yeah. you know, vaginas on the wall or something, right? But like, so every, so every six weeks, you've been doing it in about a year. What was what was the initial reaction? Were you nervous to, to put it out there? Were people like, you're insane? <laughs> Did you get protested because you're so like, <laughs> shitty? Like, what? <laughs> no, honestly, I've gotten really great feedback from it. Um, and... I initially did it because some of my girlfriends and I got together a few years ago for a girlfriend's birthday party. And we decided to do this. We're like, let's take a picture and paint and have like a pussy paint night is what we called it. Um, And so in turn, I decided to make that into an actual event that I host locally. And, you know, the place that I hosted it, she was like, I'd love to promote your event. I'm like, cool. It's called Pussy Paint Night. She's like, oh, I can't promote that. Like, I can't put that on my on my business page. She's like, you can still host it here. I love what you're doing, but I just, like, can't put pussy on my business page. I'm like, okay, fair enough, you know. I feel like that was the only kind of pushback I got. But, um, you know, I tell people sometimes, and they're like, it's just the word sometimes catches them off guard. But the yeah. event <laughs> itself is going to push you out of your comfort zone. So my kind of mm-hmm. standpoint is like, if, if the word triggers you so much, then maybe this event is, is going to be like a little too much for you because you can't even see past that to be able to look and, and see like the beauty of your vulva when you're looking at it. Right. Yeah. And I am kind of just like a little bit more outspoken, raunchy, I'll swear. And here in Utah, you know, if you're, Mormon and you are like dedicated to the practice if I say fuck in front of you like you're gonna you might have a meltdown you know so it's like it kind of um, is attracting my ideal clients in in the way that I phrase the actual event itself well you know outspoken raunchy artistic intelligent Lindsay you are in the right fucking Mm -hmm. place here with me on today's episode so I'm glad that you're here I think that this event is like, I think this could be huge, like down the line, even if you've only been at this a year and you're having success, I think that it's like, because have you noticed, have you had people like come back to you afterwards or, or drop you a DM or shoot you a text and be like, I kind of feel better. Like I'm having better sex. I'm feeling better. I'm, I'm masturbating. But like, are these things like positive? Like talk, tell me a little bit about the positive feedback that you've had where you're like, wow, that just changed my day hearing that. Oh, absolutely. It's like within probably the first week or two after the event, I get a text from almost every single woman that's come saying I'm self-pleasuring more frequently. I don't feel so shameful when the, that thought comes up. I now have like logical reasoning to be like, no, like you don't like exist here anymore. Like they just kind of don't give it the space and their sex life hasn't like gotten better because they're, they're not feeling so ashamed or worried about what it looks like down there. Right. Like women have come who who've had children and they're like, it just doesn't look the same after I've had kids. And it's like, great. It's not supposed to, or women come and, 
they say like, I've always been ashamed of my inner labia, right? Like they're long and they hang. And I'm like, perfect. Like they're supposed to be like that. Everyone's looks different. Like it's like your fingerprint. No vulva looks the same. No penis looks the same. They all have the same parts, but they look different, right? Like someone's clitoris can be like olive size, like pretty big. And others are like little pea size. And it's still the same structure. It's just specific for you. And it's beautiful. And that's really my goal is to to say whatever it looks like, it's normal. Because as women, we get told yeah. that we need to look a certain way every damn day of our life. We need to go get plastic surgery. We need to get Botox. We need to get a boob job. How about labiaplasty? Just go cut off your fucking vulva your labia just so it looks like a porn stars. And I'm like, stop mutilating your body for approval. You know what I mean? It's like, it's totally normal and healthy as it is. And when we can understand that and start to build more of a relationship of like love and appreciation, we're not doing that for external validation. And then if, you know, we decide to do any of those things, it's like, because it's just enhancing and it feels good for us. Right. But I'm, I lean towards like doing things naturally and just loving, loving you as you are. You don't need to change, you don't need to change anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it brings up a lot of, a lot of stuff like, you know, where is this judgment coming from? Obviously like religion and, and, you know, we look at porn and all of these things too. Sure. And there's, again, I say this every episode, but there's nothing wrong with porn. Porn is amazing. It's lovely. It's just you have to engage on it and on your own comfortability level. And you have to realize that that is a show. Those are athletes. They're, you know, their whatever. Profession. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. So, th- so like that being said, I think, you know, and take it from me and I can only speak from like a male standpoint, but like if you're in, if you have a partner, whether it's a, someone you're dating or, or it's just a hookup or a fuck buddy or whatever, and they make a, a shitty comment about your vagina, first of all, Fuck that guy, right? Second of all, you're in the wrong place wrong with the person. wrong person. Yep. Yeah. And then even if you have like a partner who's not a man and they say something, fuck them too. Like no one – like t- that to me has never been like a thing, right? But apparently like some – there's some assholes out there that are like, you know, that – and then it that sort of shame, uh, I'm not good enough. Now my vagina is not good enough. That sort of travels – you know, around and, right. and stays and, ge- and, you know, generationally. So that well, sucks. And, it, and something that you, it starts at such a young age. So like when you are taking a bath and your parents are like, Oh, don't touch that. Those are your private parts. Like right. you don't even name the anatomy. You don't even know right. what it's called. It's your wee wee, <laughs> your pee pee, your no, no, right. your private. It's like, this is starting as children so that you yeah. inherently have this sense that something's wrong with this part of your body. So when someone says something like that, it immediately triggers that shame. And like you said, like if you're with a jackass like that, like red flag, get out. Like love yourself enough to be yeah. like, nope, like my body is perfect. If you don't like it, then that's your fucking yeah. problem. Right. And the, like, you know, the word pussy, what a fucking cool word, right? Like what's the greatest word ever, <laughs> first of all. And like, and you're, you're right. You should have that. Like, that's my pussy. That's my shit. Like, fuck you, yeah. asshole. You even like have a quote on your Instagram, which I pulled that you posted um, a while back, but it's, you cannot be a powerful woman and be afraid of your pussy. Like how fucking bullseye you know like so maybe dive into that even a little bit more like where that is a source of power in terms of confidence and how you move through the world you know absolutely i mean it is our creative energy if you think about sex that's how we all got here okay we literally create fucking humans right with (laughs) this part of our body so it is our power source and i'm definitely into more of like spirituality and things of that nature. I practice Kundalini yoga. So from a more spiritual standpoint, if we look at like the chakras or energy centers, our sacral is where our sexual energy is located, but that's also associated with creativity, with things like money, right? So it's like when we have a block here, we're not authentically expressing all of who we are. Like 
we're shoving down some form Mm -hmm. of our authentic expression and we're not showing up in the world in a way that's like us. And that's where it's like when we can tap into this and not give our power away to anyone, any partner and be like, okay, this sexual interaction is not about you giving me an orgasm. This sexual interaction is about us having a fucking great time together because we are vibing and we're creating something epic. Like it's just a beautiful, fucking amazing, pleasure filled experience. And when we don't have that confidence because we don't know how to even give ourselves an orgasm or we're so disconnected from our own pussy. It's like we will be with someone and like we get almost codependent and like hooked into this like sexual tie and this energy and people could like treat us like shit or talk down on us and we'll just accept it because it's like, well, okay, you know, it's like take your power back, like learn how your body works learn how to orgasm, learn what you really like and fucking ask for it. And when people can meet you there, great. Like that's where you want to create sex from, right? Even if it is just like a one night stand or you're just like meeting someone for the first time, it might not be a long-term relationship, but it's like, I don't know about you, any sexual interaction I have, it gets to be fucking great. And if it's not great, like, eh, like I, I have one life to live and I've got so many orgasms I need to have, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, we could fucking pull all sorts of scientific shit or whatever about how, you know, more orgasms, healthier life, whatever it's true, but like, they just fucking feel great. Like the idea of being with someone who's as open-minded or maybe close as whatever, as you are, like you said, creating something. So yeah, I mean, I've had, uh, some subpar sex experiences in my life. We all have, but for the most part, I've had some pretty fucking incredible ones too. I mean, you know, and those are the ones that you not only remember, but you carry with you. Um, and it sort of defines your, your sexuality in a way, cause you're drawing on that. And what if I did this and all of these things, I want to jump back to something you said, cause it is really important about how, um, that not having that confidence, right? Like being ashamed of your pussy or being ashamed of, of your body and whatever it it allows you to, it, you show up in the world less, you bring less of yourself to the world. You're depressed, you're anxiety fucking ridden. Right. And so your life loses out when you don't have that full confidence, you know, feel good about yourself yeah. and, and whatever. But you know who else loses out in that is the fucking world, yes. right? Because you're now you're not bringing your full it's self. It's your full self in all and ways. So, this isn't just about sex. Exactly. Exa- exactly. But sex, I think, is one of the main components that l- connects that and lights that whole system exactly. up. And it's not – you're right. It's not just about like – Oh, you know, I fucking rubbed one out here or I fucking hooked up with this person or da-da-da. It's like – how are you seeking that out? Right. Like every day, how are you trying to like have a, a great orgasm that day? Um, what does that do for your mental capacity, your stress levels, all of this shit, right? Which is really cool with what you do. Cause you're working on all of that. And that's the secret I would say to the sex party. If you guys haven't figured it out yet with the show, but like we do, we, we are like talking about coming and, and pussies and all the things and all the like slutty fun stuff. But sex also like connects every other goddamn thing. So like that's why this show we go a little deeper sometimes because sex is everything. It's everywhere. And it's all under that same sort of, you know, well-being, emotional, fucking fun umbrella, um, which is great that you're here. I kind of like all that being said, right? Because it's a lot because I won't shut <laughs> up. But um, I, I want to know what was it? Was there an experience? Was there multiple experiences was there something you read um some sort sort of inspiration that puts you on this path to do this work why are you doing this work yeah um so i would say the the main thing that really shifted for me pointing me in this direction of like teach learn discover everything you can about this area of life was how i was raised so i grew up again in utah here but I have two moms and 17 siblings. So when people think of Utah, they think of polygamy and they're like, oh, are you polygamous? I'm like, I'm the one person that can be like, yes, 
<laughs> yes, I actually did grow yeah. up in a polygamous family. And it's it was like a whole nother layer of the shame on top of the the overarching like dogma that's the LDS religion, right? Kind of very similar beliefs. So it's FLDS or fundamentalist. And what they believe in is also plural marriage, right? Multiple wives. And so I was taught, don't have sex till you're married. Sex is bad. All of this. But then I'm plopped right here in this society that believes all of these same things. And my dad has two wives. And people know it. And they judge me for it. And so as a young child, I just had this awareness of like relationship dynamics. Because I'm like, I'm just like everyone else. And people like their kids can't hang out with me anymore. Like as a young, young kid, like friends would stop talking to me. Their parents wouldn't let them see me because my dad had two wives and me, I'm like, this is, this is my normal. Right. I'm like, what, like, what is so, what's a big deal. So as a child, I was very aware of these relationship dynamics. And I would say that was probably the initial thing that made me really curious about why people make such a fucking big deal out of it. And then as I grew, right, of course, experimenting with sex in my late teenage years, recognized that there was a phase where I was having a lot of sex where it was just like trying to meet this emotional connection and like validation. Like I, I stated previously, and I had this moment where I'm like, oh, I'm actually searching for something much deeper than just like to get off really quick or, you know, have this one night stand. I want this deep relationship with myself. I want to love my body. I want to feel empowered in the world. And that's really where my journey began, where I'm like, let's pick up some books. I started reading lots of books, getting super deep down the rabbit hole, and then eventually decided like, this is my path. And I want to, I want to teach and educate others on what I've learned for myself. And then I became certified. And that's kind of a short, short story. And one other thing I want to share is that there is so much deeper here, like you mentioned, which is why like in my coaching practice and with the women I work with, I actually encourage insertables or um, like dildos, like insertion toys, because most uh, women, they'll just rub one out with a vibrator. And again, vibrators, great. Keep doing it. Orgasms or orgasms, like more orgasms, the better. So no shame. Shame needs to go out the window. But if you want to start to experience deeper levels of pleasure and connection with yourself, find your G-spot, find your cervix, go internal and start to like recognize that so much more is available there. And it can get uncomfortable at times, which is why women tend to pull away. But the reason is because it's vulnerable and it takes a level of trust and surrender as well as willingness to go to those deeper levels and like to really open yourself. And a lot of women get so stuck in that like masculine, I have to do, do, do that. It's hard for them just to like relax into it. And that's like what I teach. Like let's get you these deeper levels of pleasure and orgasm and teach you again, anatomy. So you know where to find these places, but then you you need to like do the work like or play. We'll call it play. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, again, uh, tons of questions. Let's just start at the beginning of that second piece. Um, if someone's listening, watching in the audience, right. Um, let's find the G spot, right? Like, can you explain where that would be located, how to reach it, all of the things. And from your professional standpoint, cause this is fucking gold from a professional like you. So. Oh, absolutely. So when you are looking at your vulva, right. And We'll just start by saying this. The external anatomy is the vulva. The vagina is not anatomically correct. It's just one part of what you can see from the outside. You can see the vaginal opening, but you can't even see the whole vagina, right? So let's start calling it a vulva. That's kind of like, it's a nice word to know the anatomy, but it's like, I don't really like feel super turned on when someone's like, my partner is like, let me see your vulva. You know, I'm like, ah, like pussy. Let's go with (laughs) pussy. That's why I love the word. It's just so like, it's sexy. It's empowering. So 
Well, the audience will also know, not to interrupt you, the audience will know that we started this off in the beginning of the episode. I'm like, oh yeah, they're painting their vaginas. Yeah. So even myself, like I, listen, I'm not a mute. I'm a fucking idiot, right? That's why I'm doing the shows because there's so much to fucking learn, even the basics. So nobody should feel bad. Your host just fucking <laughs> up right in the beginning. So we all do it. All the pussy. Like, I'll you catch know. myself yeah, and still. I, and I mean, it's okay. Like we know yeah. what you're talking about. But again, the more education sure. is just like, it's the better. Yeah. yeah. We haven't been this fucking shitty system that I want to fucking pull down brick by brick with every episode of this podcast <laughs> has fucking, you know, trained us to be moronic. Right. So we're not in tune with the shit that makes us human and that's just not going to stand. So you bring up a really, a really good point there um, to just yeah. pose the question. Why do you think this has been hidden from us for so long? Why do you think they don't teach about this? Because when we have this sense of power, we don't put up with, with people's bullshit. Like we just, we have a bullshit meter and like when it goes off, we have enough boundaries and clarity around our own desires and self-respect that we do something different. So it's like, oh, what an easy way to control a population by saying sex is bad. You're going to go to hell if you have it. It's like, mm, right. interesting. Right. So back to the G spot. Sure. The G spot, yeah. you, if you go into the vaginal canal, you're going to go up and curve towards like the anterior wall. So towards your belly button. So that's where you're going to be reaching. Now, you're feeling for kind of like a ridged, bumpy area. It's almost like spongy. That's technically where your G-spot is. But let me explain a little bit more about the G-spot. So the G-spot is sure. actually the urethral sponge. Now, you pee out of your urethra. A lot of women don't even know that. They think they pee out of their vagina because that's where you bleed. So why wouldn't you pee out of your vagina, right? Right. You have a right, whole right. different system for that. Your urethra is connected. It's a tube connected up to your bladder. And the pee moves from the bladder down the urethral tube, out the urethral opening. That's how you pee. Now, around the urethra is called the urethral sponge. And it is tissue that protects it from infection. So when you get aroused, it swells with female ejaculate. It is not urine. And it gets puffy and squishy and it feels like a sponge. So that is your G-spot. So what's happening when you get aroused is it swells and you can find that again on the anterior wall towards your belly button and you can feel it's a little bit ridged. And when you penetrate it, especially when you're not in like a super aroused state, it's probably going to feel a little bit like you have to pee because you're touching a bit of the urethra. If you're highly aroused, the more pleasure it be pleasurable it becomes. And if you penetrate that long enough, you can actually ejaculate. It is again, not urine. So that's how you would squirt as well is by penetrating the G spot. And that's how you would find that right. for a G spot orgasm. Now it's functional as well as it's built for pleasure. So functionality, yes, it swells so that when you're having sex, no kind of bacteria can get into your bladder to create a UTI or urinary tract infection. But also, again, it creates really intense sensations of pleasure, and it's another form of orgasm. Yeah, I, I mean, right? It could be a fucking blast. No, no pun intended. Right? <laughs> um, but but now now that we've now that we've arrived here at this at the squirting thing, right? We might as well address it because some people will argue, oh, it's not real. It's pee, blah, all the fucking <laughs> horse shit, right? But then. As you just said, it's female ejaculate. So can everybody squirt? Is it a function? Like, let's just put the debate to bed once yeah. and for all with you. Like, So my first thought when you said that, I'm like, if you're bad at sex, just say that. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, yeah. exist. It just doesn't exist. I'm like, it does exist. It happens every time you get aroused. And the reason it happens is so you don't get an infection. It's it's your body's built to support this act of sex so that we can procreate and also so we can enjoy it. Pleasure is built into sex so that we want to do it because if we didn't want to do it, we would not exist. So pleasure is your birthright. Literally, you are meant to have pleasure. You are meant to enjoy this through and through. The clitoris itself is the only organ 
in the body that sole purpose is pleasure. It literally does nothing else other than give you orgasms. So there again is your permission slip to let go of any shame you have around this. And back to the squirting. Yes, that swells. It happens every time. It is difficult to have a squirting or G-spot orgasm when you are so uptight and you cannot relax. You will not be able to release and relax that sponge or that muscle to actually ejaculate. So my what I would say is practice really getting relaxed. And then another more um, tactical tip would be to pee before sex or before you play with your G-spot so that if that sensation comes up of, oh my gosh, I have to pee, you can just be like, oh, I just peed. That's not what's happening. I'm actually just hitting the G-spot. So keep penetrating it. And the more aroused you get, that sensation will go away. And then you'll be able to actually have an ejaculatory orgasm if you are able to relax enough into it. So my belief, and just based off of the science of how the body works, is yes, everyone can squirt. But back to my original statement, if you're bad at sex, just say that. Don't don't be like, it's not possible. I'm like, no, you just haven't found it. <laughs> yeah, people get so fucking angry about it. You know, it's like a, it's just like one of those eternal fucking back and forth, like, which is like, whatever. Um, and it, that's amazing. Like the, the, the value you just dropped right there. Holy fuck. Right. Cause I mean, you put a, a rumor to bed, you, you um, you, you know, you showed everyone where the G spot is, how to have a squirting orgasm, what's happening, yeah. you know, like, and I would imagine, especially someone who has never had one, like the first time is like in an insane release. Mm-hmm. And that's like, of course, physical release, but also mentally, mm-hmm. right? I can't even imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. It just, it's, it's this place of like really feeling so relaxed and, you know, you are mm-hmm. excreting fluid. So like it is wet. Um, there is this really, right. I'm forgetting the name. I'm forgetting the name of the company, but you can just look up like waterproof blankets. But there's a company that's that sells a squirter blanket that's waterproof basically. And like you put it down because if once you find this spot and you know how to push push that button, plan on yeah. washing your sheets every time. Yeah. Like it, it's idea. just Buy it's it. quite a bit of fluid that can come out. And so um the first time that it happens for someone too, it can be kind of shocking of like, oh my gosh, like literally there's like this puddle, like, did I pee? Like it's, and so understanding the anatomy, how things work and going at it from that angle is really supportive. And sometimes depending on where, because all of our our bodies are built a little different, right? Like some of us are taller, we have wider hips, shorter, right? We all have the same parts, but your G spot might be a little further up. It's in the same spot, but with your fingers alone, if you're practicing, you might not be able to fully penetrate it in that way. So that's where, again, I'm like, get some insertion toys, get an eye like right. glass crystal, or I have like, a, it's called an enjoy wand, N-J-O-Y, pure wand. Mm-hmm. You can look that up. It's a stainless steel curved wand. It's like, looks like a, like a U. It's really, really curved. And that's a really good one to easily penetrate this spot and also get the pressure needed to actually have like an ejaculatory orgasm a g-spot orgasm so look at that toy if you want something that goes a little bit deeper than just you know your fingers or your partners right and so like when you start this process with someone and and you start talking about insertables and g-spot and squirting and all those things like we just Mm did are you like are you easing them like, Hey, try, try this. Right. And then work your way up to like this thing you're like putting inside you and walking around with it all day. Or like, where does it, cause I know it's different and whatever, but I, I know that that sensation for some people can be incredibly powerful. Right. Right. So yeah, the work that I do is really, um, more with actual like dildos. Right. So you said like putting something right. inside of you, I know they have like weighted balls or like different toys that you can yeah. actually leave inside you throughout the day. And it like sure. creates friction and like arousal and stuff just because there's like sensation and like touch happening. Um, so it's not necessarily that those are really fun, 
Um, you can strengthen the pelvic floor with things like that and with like doing Kegels, um, Yoni eggs, and there's lots of different um, pelvic floor strengthening like sex toys on the market. However, I have my my girls get in, in my course, I actually gift them um, a toy. So they get a crystal wand. It's rose quartz. It's super cute. And, and also, you know, if you're into like the metaphysical properties of crystals, that's better, but they're just pretty. Like, I just want to leave mine out to show because it's like, you know, you want to display your (laughs) crystals. They're just beautiful. So, but it's firm. Okay. So when you are going into your vaginal canal, I like to explain it like this. So Yes, this is playful and fun, but I do a lot of deep emotional and energetic work with my clients as well because we hold so much shame around this. So again, we're having like this playful conversation around anatomy and all of this, and that's all great. And we hold emotion in our body. Okay, so let's say you go in for a massage and you're getting your back massage and there's like a knot in between your shoulder blades and it just like hurts. And sometimes if someone gets in there deep enough, like you might get tears welling up in your eyes or you feel like a little bit vulnerable we store emotion in our body and we store emotion as women in our wombs and in our vagina around our cervix in in this area energetically so if we've had things like sexual abuse trauma miscarriage abortion anything like that we are holding that in our body. So then when we go to have, let's say, just penetrative sex with a partner, they could hit our cervix and it could feel really, really tender because there's emotion that's being stored there. In Chinese reflexology, your cervix is actually directly connected to your heart chakra. And so when you're penetrating this part in your body, it can feel really vulnerable. That's why I said you need to be in a state of like trust, surrender, openness, so that you are willing to like feel anything that comes up. And what I find with myself on my own journey of healing, that was my journey of experiencing through self-pleasure these emotions and even like repressed memories and like pain and stuff that I was storing inside of my body that came up through a self-pleasure practice that I was then able to release and then reach deeper levels of orgasm. Does that make sense? Do you have questions about that? Sometimes it's very heady. Yeah, I, I love all this. And and it, it you are um, incredibly gracious in terms of how you explain things. And I think that that goes a really long way because some people just say like, hey, this is that. And I'm really lucky that I... I'm really good at picking guests, yeah, but um, all 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 of my guests, <laughs> yeah, all of my guests for sure. All of my guests have that thing that you have, where you you're explaining it with like you're almost glad to be explaining it. I think that just goes a long way. So yeah, I have a ton of questions, but I just like to let you roll and do your thing, and then I'll ask my questions. Um, but I I think I want to jump back for a second because I'm curious everything you said. Are you finding that when women come to you to start their work, their journey, their play, right? Is it that they've sort of assumed that pleasure and sex is just like, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to bang one out. I'm going to just rub my clit and watch a someone's gram or porn or mm-hmm. whatever it is that their thing is. And they just have a real quick mm-hmm. one and then that's that and that's their that's their entire relationship with sex and self-pleasure, right? right? So then when they come to you, you're like, yo, you can do that. Yeah. And so is it, is it, is it like yes. that? Or can you talk a little bit about that sort of, um, okay, cool. You're doing that, but let's add this. And then that's where the insertion stuff. And why is it a deeper orgasm and all of that stuff? So, yes. So that is pretty like standard. Right. And like you said, yes. And so we build pathways to pleasure. That's how our brain works. We have neural pathways and we build habits, right. And our brain likes shortcuts. So when we do something the same way, time after time after time, it builds a stronger connection to that thing and we get there easier, right? It gets easier. That's what, you know, consistency and momentum and all of that does in any part of life. Same thing with sex. So if you're doing the same thing over and over and over to get off, if it is just grabbing a quick vibrator or using your hand, looking at some form of like pornography or not, like reading some like erotica, like whatever your thing is, my invitation to my clients is 
that is fun and it's great. And let's connect you more deeply into what's available, which is deeper orgasms and more presence to the moment and your body. Because even in, you know, those quick rub offs, sometimes we can be so disassociated from our full body. We're just so heavily focused on the orgasm and we're looking at external content, right? To engage that part of our brain and that imagination and all of that, which is fun. But when you can be present in the moment and start to explore in a deeper way, yes, emotions might come up. If you've had any kind of experience that's been emotional sexually, that's living in there. And if you haven't dealt with it, it's going to probably come up. But when you actually feel it and give it space to exist and not live inside your body anymore, it leaves. And then when you have an internal orgasm, it's like mind blowing. It's so much deeper. It's so much more than a clitoral orgasm looking at porn will ever be. And again, those are fun and they're a great warm up, right? A great way to like really get aroused. But when you're in that state, let's say that's your your routine, do do the routine, okay? Have the vibrator and do do your thing. But once you've had one orgasm, now take it away. Get an insertion toy because you're now fully aroused. You just had an orgasm. Give yourself a minute or two to kind of like relax because the clitoris can be a little bit sensitive just like a penis right right after sex have to have that refractory period and then use the insertion toy and start to go a little bit deeper take away the porn like notice where your mind goes are you constantly going to a fantasy or something outside of yourself again all great and fun but when we want to create deep intimate connections with our partner especially in a long-term relationship we want that experience to be really like intensely present. That's the best sex to me. It's like, we're making eye contact. Like it's not this like, okay, I'm going to get you off and then you get me off. It's like, no, we're like just moving together and like everything's happening simultaneously. And I'm so lost in this moment that it's like, there's no, there's no time frame. There's no, like, there's no goal. We're just like in it. And then yes, orgasm comes, but it's like, it's a different place. And that's where I'm like, if you start practicing and self-pleasuring with your with yourself in that way, that's how you create it with another person. For you just to expect to have that type of connection with a person, especially long lasting, right? Of course, we have the honeymoon phase. But if you want that shit to last, make it last with yourself. Like be in pleasure and like be sensual and like embody this aspect of pleasure that's available to you. So you can infuse that into every area of your life and then again into the bedroom so that when you're with your partner, it's just like, it's game on, like all the time. Yeah. Okay. So three things to to ask about all all of that because that's just fucking amazing. You're amazing. Um, So one, do you... Are you finding that most people, most women, right, have never even like, they're not even on that connection track. They're on the little like, yeah, I came, it was okay, whatever, it was not that deep or whatever. I'm hooking up with my husband or boyfriend or, you know, whatever, partner, right? Doesn't have to be a man, a, a woman, anyone. So they're hooking up with their partner and they're just like, you know, how do, how can I get you off? How can you get me off? And they're going to those greatest hits, right? They're whatever they're, they're doing all of that just to get it done. That are they living in a world where they're not even aware that they can connect on that level? That would be my first question. I mean, part, part, partly I would say, yeah, you know, like we're, again, we're never taught anything about sex so that when we go into having sexual experiences, it is this trial and error thing. Like we're just kind of bumping uglies, right? We're just like, well, we'll see what happens. Oh, that works. Let's try that again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, there's something too about like being able to give your partner pleasure, like you getting pleasure from that, right? And it is from that space of giving, right? If Especially if you're doing like oral, it's like you are giving, but it's like, are you, are you just giving them head or are you just receiving, you know, like oral sex as, you know, a, owner of female body body parts um, to sure. just get off. Like you can feel, right? You can feel when someone's just there to try to like quickly get you to orgasm versus when someone's like, I'm so excited. 
in this moment to be giving you this blowjob or to be like eating your pussy. Like it, like you getting excited right. is just as pleasurable for me as it is for you. So that I would say is a distinction of how that looks when you're actually doing a, I'm getting you off action. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. So it's like being engaged in the present moment and not out here. I don't think we're taught that. Yeah. We're taught no. disconnect. That's- and even like in the whole sex toy industry. And I'm like, whatever you have, great. But I've really made it my mission to like, I want to talk about the deeper shit. Like, I will, sure, I can give you sex toy recommendations. Here's a position and some lube. Like, yeah, ask me and I'm going to give you a good recommendation because I don't put shit in my body that is toxic. I use lots of clean, sure. really high quality products because I think that that's how the sex market should be. But unfortunately, it's not regulated. Like they don't have an FDA. Yeah. So there's a lot of shit on the market that's actually like pretty toxic. But that aside, I, you know, I'm not going to talk about lube and toys and positions all day. I want to talk about what we're actually seeking is this deep connection to ourself and our partners. And if you believe yeah. the universe, God, whatever, like it is this deep connection to our power center that fuels every aspect of life. And I would add to that, like if people are like, oh, wow, I, that doesn't, I don't think I've ever felt that or whatever. Like think about a time, like there's turn, like you're getting ready to go, uh, you know, into bed to like fuck shit up with your partner. You're going to get it on right now. Like you're excited. You're turned on all you're, you're aroused all of the things right now. Think of a time when you were so aroused and so turned on, you have no idea why, but you're in this like, holy shit. If I don't get it and like whatever that that's the difference yes. to me. Cause you could feel it just being in just being yeah. aroused. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's totally, di- totally different. And it just happens for whatever reason. But when you can dial into, okay, here's the reason I'm going to make that happen. That's really cool. 100%. And what I'll say kind of back to anatomy is women get erect just like men. So the clitoris actually needs time to get fully erect for women to experience the pleasure that's actually available. So if you are having penetrative sex before the clitoris is fully erect, it's just, it's one, not going to feel as good for the woman. And two, not even for the man if it is a heterosexual relationship because the the vestibular bulbs, um, I have a little model here. Let me grab it. Okay. Grab the model. Let's do it. So just so if you're watching, you can see what these are. This is the clitoris. Right. So the vestibular bulbs here, they swell. And if you are having sex before they swell, it's just not going to feel good going into the vaginal opening, which is right here. If they're nice and swollen for a cock, it's going to feel really tight and wet and juicy. And it's going to feel really good for the woman because these are full of nerve endings that create sensation and pleasure. So you wouldn't have sex with a flaccid dick. Okay. It's just not going to work. Right. (laughs) It wouldn't no, feel really no. much of anything. And so Doesn't same work. thing, right? There's this whole talk of like foreplay, like, oh, like I just want foreplay. It's like, there's a reason women say that there's a reason it's actually because they're not fully erect. Like they need to get fully erect as well to experience the pleasure that's available to them and to you. So like you were just saying, right about the arousal, like, comparing it to like those moments when you're like so aroused and you're like so ready to go and it's in those moments when you're like you have like the hot steamy sex that's just like made up of dreams fairy tales whatever and then yeah in the moments when like you're just doing it because like yes like it would feel good and you're in a relationship and like eh, it's like take time for your turn on this takes right 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes minimum to become fully erect. So for a man, especially if like the man's the one initiating and he's just like super turned on to go right to the woman and be like, let me just stick it in you. Like, right. 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 Let's take a little bit of time. Like beep, beep, rewind rewind, buddy. (laughs) He comes first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Warm her up, take 20 minutes and it doesn't need to be direct genital touch either. You don't need to be like, okay, well let me like finger you or eat you out like right away. Just like massage her back, like touch her inner thighs, 
or stomach, like these parts of the body that don't seem erotic actually are more erotic than Mm -hmm. directly going for it. Now, if the woman's meeting you in that space and she's like, hell yeah, I'm horny. Let's have a quickie. Like she's just like, she's ready to go too. There's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either. But what I'm trying to explain here is like, there's a reason why all of these like you know, terms that we throw around all the time of like foreplay and like, she just wants all of this in the bedroom and it's just so much work. And it's like, you're just being lazy for one. Oh God. Yeah. And a piece of shit. (laughs) Like like, (laughs) you're a lazy piece of shit. Let's just call it what it is. If you're bad at sex, just say that. Like, it's okay. You have so much to learn. You're making everyone look Go pick up a book. Like there's so much like to think that you have it all figured out is straight up ego like it's you just thinking that you like are the king of i i don't know it's this this egotistical asshole mode of like i don't need to learn anything and i'm like you probably are the most shitty lover in the bedroom and and you probably think you're the best but that's your your big head being blown up being like oh no i'm great at this i don't need to learn about sex sex is just sex i just put it in right and it's like what the fuck? No, you need to learn. And when you can be so dedicated to giving as much as you're receiving, that's when shit gets good. That's when you actually are able to receive the best orgasms of your life. And I'm saying this to you men, like get so obsessed with her pleasure and how much pleasure you are giving her because I promise it's actually going to be so much more pleasurable for you than you being like, oh, I just want a quick blowjob or, oh, I just want to have like a quick quickie. It's like, no, I promise yeah. it's so much better. <laughs> I mean, totally. And like the difference between like, I, like I'm talking about like, there's those moments where you're turned on, right? It's like, oh, I got to like, you know, rub one out today to get my quota in, you know, or whatever, you know, and you're doing it. It's like, it feels good, whatever. It's over. Then there's those times you like are like, oh my God, did I eat something? (laughs) Like, did someone poison me? Like, why do I feel like this? Like I have to go now or whatever. That's the difference, right? When you're on 20, when you're on whatever. Um, and, and I think too, to, to, to again, add to what you're saying, even things that like, let your partner feel your, the rumbling of your voice Mm -hmm. from behind on the back of their Mm -hmm. neck and shit. Right. It's that kind of shit that where it's like, think, think a little bit outside the box on how to turn somebody on. And I think you're right. You will, you will really, once you dial in and you're like, I'm having fun, but I want, you know, her, I want my partner to fucking just like blow it all over the walls and shit, like go for it. Right. It really does change shit. It really does make a difference. And I'm wondering. That's an element of play. Like it's not a chore. It's just like, how, how can we like just fuck shit up? (laughs) Right. It's a fucking Beyonce upgrade for sure. Like, you know, for, for sure. Um, what I'm really curious about now is that it's one thing. And we talked about for like us dudes to be fucking idiots about, <laughs> uh, for, for play and all that bullshit. Right. Um, and I wish that I could push a button or like whatever to make that change. Cause people give people bad names all the time. And it's just like, but it's one thing for us to be stupid about it, but it's another when women start buying into that poison. Like women become poisoned, right? They're like, they don't even think like, oh, I want a deeper orgasm. I want to connect, right? So do you ever have someone come to you and say, oh, I don't have time to go up there with all that. I just want to rub one out or what? Do they ever push back on you in the beginning? Yeah. I mean, okay. So when we are in that place, it, it has gotten to a point where it feels like a chore, Like even sex in a relationship, right? Like that's when you hear like, it just kind of dies out. Like there's not a lot there or, or the woman is like withholding sex or doesn't want to have sex because it's, she's just like, I could go with or without it. Like you have sex once a month, once a year, like just living in a sexless relationship. So it's like, yes, that's like idea of like, well, I don't really like want to like go that deep to experience what you're saying because like why would I when I can just rub one out and what's interesting is like that itself tells me there's deeper wounding 
underneath that. Like they've either been deeply right. hurt. There's a lack of trust in their relationship. They don't feel like they can be authentically themselves. And they are just, it's just something it's like, um, I have, there's a sex educator I follow. Her name's Kim Anami. I love her. She's outrageous. Check her out. Um, <laughs> And oh, wow. she she has this phrase called um, like gourmet sex versus fast food sex, junk food sex. And it's like, yes, you can go get some McDonald's French fries and eat them in two seconds. And it like lights up all those pleasure centers in your brain, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, those were so good. And it's like done in like a minute. Cool. Now, how about you go sit down for a nice dinner of your choice, seafood, steak, whatever, like the most gourmet five course meal, like you, you small portions, like you're not even there to like stuff yourself. Like you are there to like taste the incredible food that is in front of you. And like, once that course is done, another one comes out and like, you just savor every moment. I'm like, do you want that meal or do you want fucking McDonald's French fries? Right. What do you want? Come on, man. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone yeah. wants a gourmet meal. It, Don't lie to yourself. Yeah, and exactly. And that's what I that's what I'm that's what I mean. That's what I'm driving at because we've all gotten used to that like quick little convenience thing. If you don't like check yourself like oh shit, this isn't supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be fucking phenomenal like it, whatever. So at the very absolute minimum, right? Like what would you recommend uh you, sure, have your clitoral orgasms and 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 whatever and do the little you know, rub out yeah. sessions and whatever. Cause I get it. We're busy. Yada, yada, yada. But like at the minimum, how often should they be like checking in with themselves, like really fucking grinding for it mm-hmm. and be selfish about it and do their own thing. Is it once a week? Yeah. Is it three times? I mean, what, what do you suggest? You're on it. So I do a weekly self-pleasure practice. Um, I have a downloadable on my website. Um, it's free and it goes over my, self-pleasure practice. It breaks down kind of how I set the space and also um, the amount of time. So I dedicate 45 to 60 minutes. So I set aside an hour. And the first part is all about setting up. And I talk about bringing in sensuality or the five senses. So like lighting some candles, putting on music if you'd like, making sure you're in like a clean space, like actually treating yourself like the goddess you are, right? Like if you want others, your partner to treat you that way, treat yourself that way, okay? Take a bath, right. like whatever feels good. Put on lingerie, like lots of ideas, right? Sight, smell, taste, touch, sound, however you can enact those senses. And then you'll move into the self-pleasure practice where you're doing a insertion toy. I always have my clients start with like kind of an intention, like I'm feeling like this way today and I want, this is what I want to get out of this like time with myself. And then I always have them like dance or just stand in front of a mirror naked. How often do you do that? If you have body shame, you typically look away. You won't make eye contact with yourself that you like are crawling out of your skin. Notice if you are feeling incredibly uncomfortable just being alone naked with yourself. No shame. There's nothing to feel like wrong about. That's just an indication of, whoa, I got, I got some like deeper work that wants to be done to be healed around this so that I can truly show up confidently in my body. This is not about how you look. This is not about shape, size, anything. This is about you loving your body. And that's what this practice is dedicated to. And then you would go and actually use the sex toy, um, self-pleasure and start to welcome the space of if there's emotion that comes up or even anger, right? Like if you've had an experience and you didn't get to say no, right? There's probably a lot of anger and tension that lives in your pussy. So like have a minute where you like scream in a pillow and like punch, dance to some music, like move your fucking body. And then you close out and you kind of like just have that time where you get to be with yourself. And sometimes it's just like a wild, crazy, fun orgasm. And other times it like it can bring up some shit. And my invitation to my clients is like, that's actually where you want to be. You want to pull that stuff up and out so it doesn't affect your day to day life and your sex life and your ability to experience pleasure in every area of life, but especially in sex and in the bedroom. And then all of that translates into your relationships even if you're single dating like it just you show up for yourself in a different way you won't 
you won't have sex with the douchebag, okay, that is not treating you with respect. You're going to be like, ah, I can go home and give myself a better orgasm than you could ever give me. So no, thank you. Um, but have, right. have a good day. And then when you do meet someone who's like, yeah, like he can meet you there, game on, like it, game on, you know? And when you're just doing those like very junk food surface level orgasms all the time, it's like you're seeking for this deeper level of fulfillment and like depth and connection. So it's like you meet a douchebag and you're just like hungry for that connection. So you're like, well, I'd rather get fucked, you know? And it's like you sure. you want to get fucked because yeah. you actually want to put something inside your pussy. So maybe just get a dildo, you know, right. and like do it. <laughs> you don't you don't always yeah, be mad no, for that. Right? Yeah. And then you don't have to kick anybody out afterwards right. either. You know? <laughs> that's um, yeah. And I, yeah, that's the worst. Oh my God. Um, I think, you know, to cap this whole thing off a, a little bit, right. I, I think, you know, a lot of women will start to say, oh, I think I'm asexual. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I think, right. And and what do I know? But like, that's like a warning sign, probably like, no, you're not. But if you're, if you've gotten to that place where you don't feel good about yourself to, to have pleasure with a partner, have pleasure with whatever, and you're coming to this, realize that like, I think, you know, we're sure it may be true that someone's asexual, but that's really like, it's like a half a percent or a percent of the whole population is asexual. And I think right. that that's just a very sad, sad place to be. And so, well, I think that can be a, warn a warning sign too. Yeah. Like, shit, I need to get back in touch with my, yeah, you know, my stuff. Totally. I mean, I just would invite anyone who feels that way to just, just ask deeper questions. Just ask why, you know, if, if authentically you're just like, you know, I just don't like it, but there's no reason to why you don't like it. Okay, great. But I would probably, I you know, I would place a bet that 100% of the time, there's a reason why you are just so shut off from that, that center. And it could be in like sexual abuse. It's so common. Literally like one in three women mm -hmm. have been sexually abused. Like that, those numbers are outrageous. And we think that not That's talking insane. about sex helps. It doesn't fucking help. We need to talk about it. We need women to take back their power, stop settling for bullshit, learn how to say no, learn what's happening so that they can really we can like stop this this cruel it's just mind-boggling to me that this happens on such a consistent basis and men are not taught it either this is the thing it's like a lot of times these guys are going in and this is what they've been shown like oh well this is appropriate and it's not fucking appropriate so they think in their mind like oh well it's fine but no like it, actually consent needs to be talked about and we need to like shift past this idea that like we don't need to understand anything about sex and that it's just going to happen naturally. Yes, it will. It's a part of us being human, but it's like, you really, really need to understand what is available here so that we can start having better conversations and raise a, a new generation of humans that know what sure. this means and how powerful it is so that it's not just like thrown around like yesterday's trash. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I think it all, it all, it all relates, right? Like, um, not, knowledge is, and it's fucking cliche and corny, whatever, but fucking knowledge is power yep. back in the day when there weren't like, there wasn't an internet, there wasn't even like libraries, only the, the wealthy had knowledge mm -hmm. and they kept it for themselves. And, and then now the we're church seeing controlled thousands everything of else. years later. Exactly. So there's a reason why people want you or, or prefer you maybe to be poor. They prefer you to, to, to not be uh, having mind blasting squirt orgasms all the time because someone who is turned on and tuned in is not going to work for fucking shitty money and, you know, keep all those people and whatever. We can rip on that all fucking day, but it's the goddamn it truth, you know? And I, and I think it's all connected to sex or whatever. Yeah. Um, in clo in closing, I'm wondering if you, it, 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 anything just comes to mind where, um, you have an example of like a, a crazy sex story, right? But it's a story of like, okay, this is like the higher up, like five star Michelin star orgasm. I'm so glad that I had this knowledge and I, and I went through this crazy experience, um, versus how it used to be. Like, is there a moment or a story that stands out where you're like, that was wild. That was nuts. 
for for like myself or clients or, or yeah, per, person, per, personally, person. like your own sex yeah. life, your own like kind of absolutely. If you feel comfortable, yeah. Sharing. I mean, what what I'd like to share around that is that I've had those orgasms with my partner, and I'm in a relationship and with him for almost four years now. But the experience I want to share is when I first gave those orgasms to myself. That shit was crazy. That was the moment when I was just like. Oh my God, I don't need to rely on anyone else for my own sense of security, love, pleasure, anything. From this moment forward, when I meet another partner, it is because I do it out of love and connection. That's it. That, it was like everything. And that happened with the first time I gave myself a cervical orgasm. It is a full body. It's like, it's like meeting, meeting God kind of. It's just like, you are so like out and, and everything just like disappears to the point where it's like, you recognize how much power you actually have. You actually have full control over your life and the decisions that you make and what happens to you. And you are not a fucking victim of this society that we live in. So pull your head out of your ass and go create the life that you want. That for me was the moment where I'm like, I need to teach this. I need to, I need to talk about it. (laughs) I need people to know. I need to like somehow get people to like wake up to the fact that there's so much deeper pleasure available than what we've been settling for really. And we just don't know again, back to the sex education. That's why it's so foundational here in Utah. Our sex ed curriculum is abstinent based, meaning We don't learn anything about sex. Don't have sex. The only thing we learned was STIs and STDs. So don't have sex. And then on the other hand, if you do have sex, you're going to get a disease and die or get pregnant. It's like fear, (laughs) fear, 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 fear. And I'm like, okay, nope. Majority of the U.S. is that way. And the world, like the world at large, it's just it's time we start having these conversations and we we destigmatize it and we take away the shame because the shame controls you. You want to be back in control? Throw that shit out the window. It doesn't belong in your space anymore. Whatever your experience has been, whatever's happened to you, your past, yes, we all have our, our things and life sometimes can be really fucking hard. But if we can take those experiences and we can channel that into showing up as a better fucking human, we can literally change the trajectory of this planet and where we're going. And so many people are so doom and gloom with this whole 2020 pandemic and the world's going to hell and the presidency. It's like, okay, well, you have your own power. Stop giving it away to the election, to the president, to like, to the pandemic. Like right. let's start right. living more authentically. And I truly believe that the way we can connect back to that authenticity is through our own body, our hearts and our fucking pussies. Like, let's go. Yeah, dude. Fucking pussy power, y'all. Like, holy shit. I mean, uh, fuck. Like, uh, this whole episode, right? Like, fuck, man. Like, people like people are going to run to all of your socials or whatever from here. So, Lindsay Darger, thank you so fucking much for showing up, doing the goddamn thing. Super strong episode. I'm honored that you were here. Mm Um, you're intelligent, you're fucking driven. Uh, I love it. Where can people give you all of their money and say, (laughs) make me like you help me. Where can people find you on social? Yes, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram at Lindsay Darger and my website is lindsaydarger.com. I'm assuming you'll probably just attach things and you know, Mm -hmm. but very simple to spell. And uh, I am launching my next cohort of uh, women in my group program in July. So that is a 12-week group coaching program, um, 10 spots available. And then I do one-on-one coaching as well as check out my site and my social media. I make ridiculous posts and reels and I really try to make light of the situation. I think laughter and humor is the greatest medicine. And when we can stop taking it so damn seriously and start to play and and just have fun, it's, it will transform everything. So yeah, connect with me in any way. And I I look forward to chatting with any of you who want to reach out.
Yeah, no, that's fucking amazing. Um, and that's why you're here because we are trying to have fun and play and and make it make a tiny even if it's a tiny difference, right? Like, let's fucking burn this bitch yeah. down. Your show you know? is amazing, so, Justin. It's been so fun to thank be, you to be on this party. Yeah, thank you so much. That really, really means a lot. And you're definitely coming back, so I don't think that you're getting away with with not coming back. I'm ready. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, we will talk very, very soon. Thank you. Enormous, enormous thanks to my guest, Lindsay Darger, this week. Um, I mean, come on, right? Tons, tons, tons of value. Um, squirting and G-spots and um, all sorts of cervical orgasms and pussy paint. Thank you, Lindsay. You're amazing. That episode was packed full of it. Go show her some love um, on her Instagram. Work with her. Hit her website. Um, if you're in her area, attend a pussy paint night. Um, and then, you know, tweet it out, tag the show, tag Lindsay. Um, if you guys are loving sex party, if you're appreciating these episodes, there's a couple things you can do to show that love and appreciation. You don't have to do these things. You don't have to do these things, but if you do, it will help the show grow and become something else. We'll do crazier and crazier things, more squirting, more G spots. Uh, if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify, you can subscribe to the show. It's absolutely free. You can subscribe to the show. You can leave a rating. You can leave a review. It really, really helps. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. How are we doing? Uh, hopefully well. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can like the video on YouTube. You can subscribe to the channel on YouTube. You can leave a comment. Um, as always, you can find me on Instagram anytime, send me a DM, talk about whatever you like. Uh, and, and of course, of course, I will see you back here next fucking week. Thanks for listening. The party continues next week. Click subscribe and let's make this a regular thing. Follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at sexpartyfm. Follow Dustin at Dustin Ribka.